Hello guys and welcome to another Applied Energy 6 2 video. Today we're going to talk about the spatial storage system or the spatial storage dimension if you want. Um, I will go through some player storage or player teleport function and what to think about. I explain this in a bit and uh, also touch upon the spatial anchor. So the philosophical part about this is whether or not we are using a storage cell or a key to another dimension. Um, I'll, I'll explain later what I mean. But first, let's go through what we have in front of us. So this is a very classic setup with pylons and IO port. Uh, we have power from a creative energy cell, I should mention. And I have a four cubed volume inside these bricks and, uh, uh, and the bottom is not required. This floor is actually not required, but it helps to have it, I think. But this structure gives us a four cubed volume that we can uh, store that we will store and i've already done this so setting it up i've done it before use a storage cell of appropriate size there are 128 cubed 16 and 2. and a really important part here is that once you have set it and used it once you cannot change the cell to anything else uh, if we compare to a normal item storage cell Shift and right click if it's empty and you will get the component back and the housing. And you can, I mean, you can build those again like this. With a storage cell uh, for the spatial con uh, storage system, you can't do that. Uh, and uh, that probably lies deep into the code, uh, a bit out of my uh, field. But once you have used this one, you can see it gets a serial number. There are also a few files created on your, in your world save. And, uh, and those are quite permanent in terms of how big they are. And uh, they have coordinates. So you, you can actually teleport to, the, to that dimension. You can go there and you can teleport back. So they, they are not the same thing as a storage cell. But, okay, let's continue here. Uh, I also have a redstone system. The IO port will be activated on a redstone signal, going from low to high, I guess. And uh, once we've done that, I have a delay circuit here, very basic one. I don't know, 10 seconds perhaps. That will give us another redstone pulse after, after a while. Once we click the button, this storage cell will move from this slot to this one. And that means that we have, well, it could mean that we have placed whatever is in this volume into that cube. Or, sorry, into that cell. Then I have an import bus here. So that means I will extract the uh, storage cell from here into the network. I used to have this uh, ME chest here with a storage uh, uh, cell for temporary uh, storage, but I removed it and it seems to work fine anyway because I placed a storage bus down here with the storage cell unformatted. Doesn't really matter because I placed a fussy card here. So once we have used it, we will just take it out and send it back in. And then when the next redstone pulse comes, the th same thing happens again. And what's fun is that because I've used it before, I stored something in that dimension, I rebuilt this part and I used the storage cell again. So, and so that means that we have actually two versions of this cube. If I click, this is what actually was in the storage cell or in that dimension. And as we're coming back, 
we're getting the first one back as well. So here I have some uh, dark stone and over here we have cobblestone and wood. The storage cell went into here. We can see the redstone signal coming here and we just threw it back in. So I was afraid that that very quick operation would make, uh, because we still have a redstone signal active, that could be a problem, but it seems like it works. So I removed my, uh, my storage chest here. And the fun part is, if I stand here and I click, I end up in this, in the storage cell with my stuff and perhaps not in the cell but in the dimension and then when the redstone signal comes again I will be transported back again. So from my point of view we're not in the cell itself we're actually in another dimension and I will demonstrate this with uh, by teleporting in and out of that dimension. Uh, Let's see, I need some commands, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm ready now with my commands. Uh, so if we jump to that dimension and we check our coordinates, you can see that we have, we're at plus uh, positive 706 and, and so on. So I guess this entire dimension will consist of lots of uh, free space for all my different storage cells. And we're not, and we're swapping places between what's in there right now and what I have here. So if I tear everything down here and I, and I do the swap again, then the storage cell will be kind of empty, so to say. But what it's actually happening is that the dimension volume that has been reserved for this cell is empty. A fun detail is that I can actually go there. So if I teleport with this specific command, we are now in the inside the storage cell or in the dimension. We have a cobblestone and everything. We have our wood and we can I can't go outside this volume though. I can't go to the sides, I can't fly up, I can't go down, so I can't do much in here. I don't know why you would like to go here. So let's go back here. And if you take a look at this command, command execute in Minecraft overworld. So these are the different dimensions. The spatial storage overworld, end and the nether. So we can actually treat this, if we have other mods that can do teleportation, we can treat it as any dimension. And if I now click the button, you can see this is the block that I removed when I was in that, that dimension. And if we stand here now when we go back, if this was a survival server, we would have no way to get back unless we had some teleportation device some remote control that can make us activate the uh, the IO port at home. So let's go back. Um, on that note, what if our repeaters unload? If we get a chunk unload when we are away? Well, then you can use this spatial anchor. There are also other mods to keep chunks loaded. Now, this seems to work fine, even if I remove that. Uh, I tried it, but I can't guarantee it will work on, on all servers or all worlds. So this anchor would just keep this area shank loaded. And it will cost some power. And I can also show what world, what chunk is loaded. So roughly this region. And I made sure to keep all my repeaters with that, within that. And also I should, I should mention that this size will require 1.6 million AE uh, units of power. 
and I have a creative energy, energy cell, so this is not a problem for me. But uh, make sure to have power enough to get home as well uh, if you do something like this. So that's pretty much about what I everything I was about to uh, go through. If you have any other comments, if you have any ideas of how to use this, perhaps you can have different uh, cells and you have a room in your base and you use them to... You can swap that room between different machines or, I mean, different mobs. Perhaps you will want to use it to teleport something to the void world, the, the A2 dimension, and make the wither explode there and then take it back. Or I, I'm not sure exactly what good uses we have, but please feel free to add your ideas in the comment section. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Storage cell, is it a key or is it actually a cell, a storage cell? For me, it's from now on a key to another dimension. Uh, and I would like to hear what you think about that. All right, thanks for watching and I hope I see you in the next one. Take care and bye.